Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome to another Legends of Rune Terror spoiler review, bringing to you the latest spoilers. Yes, we are all caught up and a bunch of hours ago the latest spoilers uh, dropped, so we're getting the first half of the uh, Iron Solari uh, Targon cards, which means, as I expected honestly, one of the Targon champions we get in the first batch is um, Leona. Um, my guess would be the other two champions are Diana, because of the duality with Leona and Diana, so that is almost a sure bet if you ask me. And the last one of the first four, which I think it will be four Targon champions now, um, is probably gonna be our Alliance Soul, if I had to guess, but I could be wrong on that, just because it's kind of like a big deal, and I also think he was teased in the Targon reveal, while the, um, Champions, the other Targon champions, I think, were not really teased in the Targon reveal or in the, like, Targon story video, which was technically, like, a League of Legends video, in a way, not a Runeterra video, but still, I think, um, they're kind of tied, and I think the champions we will get will be Tariq, Leona, Diana, and Aurelian Sol, and the other three we will get later. But not 100% sure on Aurelian Sol, but almost 100% sure on Diana because of Leona. Um, Anyway, before we dive into the first five Iron Solari cards, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. A lot of my viewers that are watching are not subscribed yet, and it's only taking a couple seconds, and it's a great way to help the channel grow if you enjoy what I'm doing here. Um, and let me briefly tell you about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN, one of the leading virtual private network providers out there. A virtual private network keeps your data secure and yourself anonymous while using the internet. NordVPN comes with super fast servers, allows you to unlock your favorite entertainment websites like Netflix. They provide a 30 day money back guarantee. They also have an included cybersecurity suit, which acts as an ad blocker to boot. They don't lock any of your data, provide a 24 seven customer support. And you can use it on up to six simultaneous connections. So one account covers most or all of your electronic devices. And most importantly, they don't have any bandwidth limit. So you can use it nonstop without it getting throttled, which is particularly important for heavy users like us. It also won multiple awards and comes highly recommended by top technology experts. So if you're still surfing online without a VPN, now is the time to change that. Get NordVPN now, 70% off for a three-year plan, including one month extra for free using the code MANUS or the personalized link in the description down below. And now on to today's content. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at the spoilers. First, we have the new mechanic, new keyword. It's called Daybreak. It's basically the opposite of Nightfall. Not sure if I should call it consider it flavorful or a bit, I don't know, kind of cheesy, lazy in a way. Anyway, this also does kind of the opposite of Nightfall. It gets a bonus if this is the first card you play around. And yeah, in a lot of ways, these bony are like this round bony, kind of the same way that a lot of the um, Nightfall bony on units are um, this round bony. Uh, we're not going to see any daybreak spells here, so we don't know if there will be any and what the effects will look like on that. But all the units we have are like on play single time effects, basically. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's not really a mechanic, it's more of a keyword, and it sort of only limits you in terms of your sequencing. Like if you open a tech and want to use a spell, you can't use daybreak after combat anymore. The Daybreak cards we're going to get in this badge are all units that get certain buffs this round, so it doesn't really matter that you don't Daybreak post-combat anymore if you play them usually. But yeah, um, not a lot of restrictions here, not much build around, like with Nightfall you might need to enable certain cards. With this it's just basically making cards better without barely any condition, which is also why I'm not that impressed by this mechanic, it's kind of like just sort of tacked on. It's basically just like a like very slightly conditional uh, play effect, um, which is nothing really exciting or new. Maybe there are some cooler um, Daybreak cards coming where it has more of an impact, but the cards in this batch, it's basically just yeah trivial that it says Daybreak and that it has to be the first card you play. Um, 
sort of deal since it doesn't really make you play or play much differently and especially doesn't make you play and build your deck much differently um, so first off we have Solari Soldier it's a one cost 2-2 two -two, which is a very solid baseline and with Daybreak he gets plus one plus one this round so it's basically like a, a turn one a Butcher for free but only for that turn afterwards it shrinks to a 2-2 two -two. Um, which is still pretty strong, like it's a straight up better version of Citria, for example, which is a pretty big deal. It's um, slightly worse probably than Butcher since it has a much higher floor, but um, a noticeably uh, lower ceiling. The fact that Butcher is a 1 cost 3-3 three, three permanently on turn 1 is the big deal here, and this is more like you get a free attack on turn 1 for 3 damage, making this a surprisingly aggressive card for what we've seen from Targon so far which means there might be the sort of defensive utilitarian side of Tarik and the more aggressive side of uh, the Solari and probably also the Lunari uh, with Diana, which will have a different identity, which is a bit weird. It kind of makes me feel that um, there are at least like three kind of three identities pulling against each other in Targon here. The Solari, the Lunari, that will probably be a bit more assassin -y and ninja -y. Um while the Solari are a bit more like Demacia, I guess. And then you have like the Tariq type stuff. Not sure what they are called. I'm not like a lore expert um, on Runeterra. But um, yeah, the sort of more um, utility based stuff, um, higher health than attack and utility type stuff. Um, so yeah, um, there seem to be a lot of different sort of identities going on in the regions. And we'll see. We're also seeing that with some of the older regions, with the new cards, suddenly having the region having like at least two identities, where it before had more like one or one and a half. Um, not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. It might mean that a lot of the cards from certain like lore groups play worse with cards from other lore groups, making the region sort of in itself less coherent and less flexible and diverse because you automatically end up with a lot of like pre-constructed deck building or um, a lot of a lot of your um, cards kind of are predetermined and how they go together and there's less mix and match within Targon. So if you're in Targon, um, you basically choose which direction you want to go in Targon and then you play mostly the cards from that sort of identity part of Targon and not really much of the others while if Targon has more of a coherent identity as a whole, um, you end up with more cards, um, like more different mix and match card combinations potentially, while here they are very clearly, seem much more clearly uh, grouped into which cards go together. You could argue maybe that uh, normally that still happens with like what the cards are useful for, and maybe that's true, and maybe these sort of um, lore things just lead to the fact that now these cards are more clearly grouped and have a more like visual design and lore design identity uh, pulling them together, making it sort of easier for newer players to be like, oh, if I want to be like, I don't know, a more uh, durable but proactive uh, Targon deck, I'm going to look at most of the Solari cards, while if I uh, want more of a utility thing, I look more at the like Tariq and supporters like probably Zoe might fall into the same category and stuff uh, cards and maybe if I want a bit more fragile sort of gimmicky damage based stuff I'll look at the Lunari and that's just a guess because we have no idea what the Lunari will be like but just based on Diana and stuff I would assume they are a bit more like um, a bit more like the Ionian ninja type thing while the Solari seem to be a bit more like Demacia so that's that was a bit of another uh, concern I had with Targon the Targon might end up being sort of a second Demacia and or a second um, Ionia Ninja type thing in a way because Leona looks very much like a Demacia champion honestly and um, Diana feels a lot like one of the Ninja type um, Ionia champions except that she is this different kind of species creature and has this like dark night thing going on but um yeah 
that's about it. It's it's actually possible that the Lunari might get some Nightfall cards as well, um, since often these mechanics like Plunder, which also happen to show up in Freljord, um, so it's very possible that the Lunari get Nightfall as a mechanic as well. Anyway, let's move on to the next card. Uh, Solari Soldier definitely looks like a very good card. If you're in a Targon deck looking for a one drop, this is almost certainly going to make your deck. It's It completely denies the opponent almost any turn one attacks, and it also provides you with a really nice free turn one attack. And later in the game, it uh, is a very solid blocker that can trade up or a very decent one turn uh, pressure attacker. It's just a very solid card. like a card that is notably above the curve and so free. How wrong can you really go with that? Next we have Solari Shieldbearer. Basically the same deal. It's self-contained. You don't really need anything else in your deck. It doesn't affect deck building at all. It's a very strong card. A 2 cost 3-2 is very solid and this comes as a 3-6 the turn you play it, making it um, basically block or attack for free the turn you play it making it super strong on attack and uh, no attack token, depending on your deck. Um, it's probably going to be a bit better on defense than on offense, because it really, really punishes the opponent's attack. In that regard, it's very uh, reminiscent of Bright Seal Protector. It obviously has different up and down sides in a way, but it's also um, much more contained. Like, you don't need a one drop to play it on turn two to cripple your opponent's offense against an aggressive deck. You just play it on two and your your aggressive opponent is done for for this turn. Um, which is really powerful. Like This card is certainly a very strong two-top. So um, the Solari Soldier and Solari Shield Bearer will provide the one-two punch of the one-drop, two-drop uh, curve in the Solari-based uh, uh, Targon decks the same way that Stuff like Fleet Feather, Tracker, Protector, and Warchefs uh, prove, uh, provide the same foundation for like the Masia decks, for example. Just that they will probably play in a bit different way and have a bit more potential to be offensive, defensive uh, than the Masia in... Like, the probably at a similar power level, but with different uh, like sort of up and down sides, basically. Next we have Sun Guardian. Sorry about that. This is a 6 cost 4-3 with Overwhelm, and with Daybreak it gets plus 4, plus 4 this round. A um, bit of a mixed feeling about this card, honestly. Obviously the turn you play it, you get an 8-7 Overwhelm, which is super powerful and hits really, really hard. The problem is, it hits once, and then it's actually pretty bad. Like a 6 cost 4-3 Overwhelm is so far below the curve, it's insane. I wish they would have um, maybe made this like 5-4 and uh, give it plus 3 plus 3, since 5-4 would be more like 4 cost stats slightly better, um, or maybe like, I don't know, made it like 4-4 four, four and gave it plus 4 plus 3 or something. Like, Anything that is a bit better than baseline for three overwhelm stats, like we know we can get those stats from like a three drop in Noxus, for example. So basically, you pay like kind of obviously you can't compare cross region that well, but still, you pay like two to three mana just for the one turn buff of Daybreak. And on defense, it's quite wasted, so you kind of need to play it on an attack token turn, unlike the other ones where it's. Um, much more flexible. So yeah, I think this card actually looks kind of bad and um, there's a reasonably high chance that this is not going to show up uh, in Constructed. Maybe it's it's going to turn out better than it looks in a vacuum now, but I think in a vacuum this card actually looks pretty underpowered and kind of bad and is a card where I would think it could uh, use a potential slight buff and readjustment to balance the numbers around a bit because um, obviously the ceiling... The turn you play it is pretty strong, like a, it's kind of like almost a a level Darius without the condition and is potentially a strong finisher, but I don't think Targon is going to be aggressive enough for that to matter, and it's also still notably worse than Darius in a way. And um, so yeah, I think um, bringing up the floor a bit and maybe 
taking the ceiling down slightly um, might make this card um, a lot more attractive. Um, like I said, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's going to be better in Constructed than it looks right now, but I think right now it actually looks pretty bad. And last but not least, we have Ravoon Daylight Spear. It's a 5 cost 5-5. Five five. On Daybreak, you create a random Daybreak card in hand. It's always Day Force. Um, not sure what that means. If I had to guess, that means um, that you can play multiple Daybreak cards in a turn, so you always get Daybreak, even if it's not your first spell, which I guess is neat. Um, it might also maybe deny Nightfall, but probably not, because the only says it's always day for us. So, yeah, I think it really only just ne negates the, the, the small marginal uh, impact of the downside of Daybreak, basically. So it just negates the downside of Daybreak, which is super marginal. But to be fair, a 5 cost 5-5 five five that draws you a probably fairly good card, given that the Daybreak cards all look pretty good so far, and we probably haven't seen all of them. Um, this looks like a very solid like value 5 drop. It's not quite as good as, um, say, Lancer in Demacia, but it's still reasonably close. Being 5 health certainly matters. You get the card right away, unlike with Lancer, and you obviously lose out, out on the super powerful challenge. Um, once again, I think the, it's always day for us, super marginal, but it makes this a better late game play. Like if you play this on six and get a soldier, you can play the soldier and get in with both right away, or on seven the same with the shield bearer, and maybe even later with other cards. Um, not sure if you can create another Ravoon, which would be pretty cool and certainly gives this a bit higher ceiling because then you can kind of like high roll chain. Um, like with Swift being Lancer, they made sure that Lancer isn't an elite, even though you would think he is an elite, because he gives you elite, so you can't like high roll chain Lancers, because that would be disgusting. But it seems here that Ravoon can uh, create himself, which is pretty impressive. So yeah, this seems like another like staple, potential staple in the like Solari, Daybreak, sort of unit heavy mid range uh, deck potentially, and a very solid card. Um, for like grinding out people and gaining nice value. Um, maybe it's always day for us, means more and does more than I assume right now, but that's my best guess at the moment. All right, that's all spoilers for this batch. Um, not the most impressive mechanic, but some very robust cards. Um, Proactive Targon is looking pretty beefy. And yeah, curious to see what the other cards are going to be like later today um, by the time you're watching this and what Leona looks like and also where she falls on the curve. I guess would be somewhere between 4 and 6 cost. Probably more 5 or 6. 5 would be a bit unfortunate given that we already have Ravoon on 5 so 6 would technically be better if she's good but honestly it's more likely that she's a 5 than a 6 if I had to guess just from like what she feels like. She feels kind of like a Garen and kind of like this brawler, beefy uh, type unit. So I would guess a 5 more likely than a 6. Um, and unlikely a cheaper unit and very unlikely an, a super exp a unit more expensive than 6. Um, so yeah, 5, bit unfortunate tension with another potentially good 5 drop for the deck that she goes in. But then again, like the Demacia Garen decks ended up with Garen and Lancer on 5 as well. So usually you can take like 5 to 6 5 drops in decks like this. So we'll know more with the rest of the Solari Targon spoilers. And then we'll probably start getting the Lunari um, the next day, uh, over the next two days, with Diana, which I'm pretty excited about. I used to play um, Diana Jungle when she came out back then. I still was playing League of Legends when she came out. And she's pretty cool. She looks pretty cool. It was pretty fun to play. I'm curious to see what she's going to be like in Rune Terror. All right. What do you think of Daybreak and the new cards? Do you think it's a bit of a lazy and a bit of a boring mechanic um, like me? Or do you like it? How do you feel about the cards, especially the six drop that I think looks pretty weak? And 
what are your guesses on it's always day for us um anything more interesting than what i could think of um yeah let me know down below and if you enjoy the content please hit the like button and subscribe for more on your way out and yeah that's it again for this time i'm your host manu s i thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye